Coach Carol coming to you today to share the number one secret to saving your marriage. That's right, the number one secret. I'm Coach Carol and I saved my marriage after 26 years when we were separated and headed for divorce. And I did things that were radically different from what society and friends and everybody else told me. And I saved my marriage. And now I am coaching and empowering other women to do the same thing. And I'm so excited because I wrapped up this week with a client who had divorced her husband because of an affair that he had. And they went through, oh, horrible times. But in the end, a couple years later, they realized how much they loved each other. Actually, she did first. And then through our coaching, she was able to transform the relationship and so that they are married again, happier than ever. And as we wrapped up today, the other day and I asked her what her biggest takeaways were and what the biggest things that happened for her, she nailed it. She nailed it with the reason that she was able to save her family and so much joy. And the same thing happened for me when we were separated. You know, what happened was that, you know, I think I was raising my kids and I was working and volunteering and helping in my husband's business. And um, then I was homeschooling and there was so much going on, right? I never took care of myself. I was at the bottom of my priority list and I got exhausted and really didn't know even who I was anymore. And what happens over the course of time, as I see with so many of my clients, is that we start to get angry and resentful and just losing ourselves, right? I'm in a group of empty nesters on Facebook and so many women are just hurting that they've lost who they are now that their kids are gone and they don't even know who their husband is across the, the other end of the couch, right? So. What happened for my client and what happened for me was that, and here's the secret, we learned to love ourselves. Now, I don't mean in a selfish way where we suddenly, you know, everything became about us. I'm saying that, you know, if you're driving the car and you never put gas in that car, eventually that car is going to run out of gas, right? And you're going to be stuck. Well, the same thing happens for us as women. We're givers. We, from the time, you know, babies are born, we are changing diapers, then we have more babies, and, you know, we are dealing with toddlers and terrible twos and, and diapers, and then school kicks in, and we're volunteering, we want our kids involved in things, and our husbands, you know, mine was self-employed, so we were was working in his business, and we had rental property, and you know, of course, then I was on the, um, the Cub Scouts and volunteering at church and all those things, right? When do we stop and say, how do I feel? And what do I want? Hmm. As the kids were getting older and as I pretty much crashed and burned, that's what my coach taught me was to stop and get back in touch with what was important to me. And it was from my life experience that I was fully able to empower my client who saved her marriage and so many others, right? That I see it all the time. When we start with self-care, when we start finding out what it is that we need, for instance, I might say, gosh, how am I feeling? What do I need? Mm, you know, I'm tired. I need a nap. Permission granted, right? No, that when I had kids, that was not the expectation. If I was tired, I still needed to keep the house clean because I was living up to other people's expectations and I need to make sure the dishes were done and the dinner was going to be ready and, and all those things, right? And then I was exhausted. So now, you know, well, you know, it can be getting your nails done, right? Because that feels pretty or, um, you know, sleeping in in the morning or gosh, you know, I love extra cream in my coffee um, or in the afternoon, maybe sitting with a book for a few minutes and um, having a nice cup of tea in the morning. I'm committed to starting every morning with prayer time and just even becoming mindful of, oh my gosh, what a beautiful day. There's a beautiful blue sky out there and big white puffy clouds and outside my window I have beautiful rhododendron blossoming and stopping and really appreciating all of God's blessings around us and really appreciating all of that, right? And having a, a, an attitude of gratitude can really shift who I am and how I'm being. And so if your marriage is struggling, I want you to know that there's hope. There is so much hope and it begins with learning to love yourself. Okay, so today I would love you to type in the comments below, what are three things that you're gonna do today to love you? And it starts with pausing and asking that question, how am I feeling? What do I need?
It might be some, you know, praise music or something playing in the kitchen. I love to, if I'm working, I love to turn on YouTube and play soft piano music. What is it that you enjoy? Maybe going for a bike ride, maybe going for a walk. Um, so many things that you can do. Giggling with the kids, right? Having a tickle fast. Um, you know what your heart needs to start loving yourself again. So I invite you, type below. And if you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe, comment, share. Um, I am on a mission to end world divorce and I so appreciate your support.